There we go. All right. Hello, Matt. Hi. <laughs> so I'd like to start off by asking uh, why you joined Climate Cultures. Um, partly because I'm very nosy. Um, and <laughs> I, I came across... Um, I came across climate cultures uh, doing some Googling around arts and climate change. Um, and it seemed to me to be a very good way to understand the breadth of work that was being done um, and see uh, what kinds of things are driving people as well into environmental arts and using art in relation to, in response to the ecological crisis. Um, so yeah it just it seemed to be a fantastic resource to me really um and um good to have a, a community and to be connected to the community um the newsletters that we get especially are really helpful and so yeah just a really welcome initiative I think. okay and why were you googling art and environmentalism um I was interested to see, so I come, I don't come from an arts background. Um, okay. I'm a geographer. I okay. uh, study environmental change, um, the long history of human environment interactions. So throughout the entire time we've existed as a species. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> but we are, we are at a particular crux point now um, where we have some environmental change that's not precedented. Um, and I, became interested in the fact that that's something that's actually quite well understood among policymakers, for example, among the general population, that we are at a point um, environmentally that we haven't been at before and okay. that change is coming and that it is not good. Um, but there's a disconnect where people don't see the connection between their lives and the problem and they don't mm. quite follow through with action. And I don't, I'm not targeting um, the population general here. I suppose I'm more thinking about business leaders and policymakers okay. um, who I think understand the, understand the problem, but are reluctant to make the changes that need to be made. Um, mm. And so I, I was doing some reading uh, around that and um, became interested in the work of environmental psychologists, um, especially, okay. I think I have to mention Lorraine Whitmarsh, who was at Cardiff University, now at the University of Bath, um, okay. and uh, Nick Pigeon at Cardiff. Um, and their um, colleagues and students, who some of whom spun off to form, um, or to work for at least, Climate Outreach, um, charity mm -hmm. based in Oxford, yep. um, mm -hmm who do really good work on how to communicate about climate change. And mm -hmm. they identified um, a few barriers to people perceiving climate change as a risk. Um, okay. And it seemed that uh, the way to get around some of these barriers was by creating more human stories about mm. the problem. So drawing what are quite abstract scientific concepts into people's social realities um, yeah. and making it, yeah, making it, making it a situation that they can see themselves in. Um, yeah. And so I became really interested in how arts, very broadly creative arts could, um, could help with that really. So I, I wanted to see what else was out there. Um, and that's kind of what led me to, <laughs> to Googling and finding climate cultures. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and, and have, or did you before that use any arts in your, I don't know, your research or your teaching or, and, or have you done so since then? Did it inspire did. you? Um, <laughs> so yes to both. Um, okay. So I came, I was very lucky um, that I went to Cardiff uh, University to do a PhD in environmental archaeology and I was supervised okay. by Professor Jackie Mulville there um, who had at around the same time that I was there had begun using art and performance for want of a better word um, as a way of engaging people with um, histories of human animal interactions um, so in oh. particular um, she had a, a project with an artist called Paul Evans from Sheffield um, called Future Animals, 
that um, worked based within the National Museum of Wales, based, um, worked with um, school kids in the area and um, young people who were not in education or training or employment, um, and l asked them to imagine how people, so she spoke about um, selective breeding and the ways mm -hmm. that we have changed wild animals to become animals that are useful to us one way or another. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> And she spoke about that and then Paul Evans led workshops asking the children and young people to um, imagine ways that we could change animals to suit our future. Um, and so <laughs> they created a really nice archive of um, postcards drawn by, oh. drawn by these young people, um, which we then took to the Green Man Festival in South Wales and uh -huh. displayed. And we had casts of dog skulls um, a species and a wolf skull, so um, a species that we've manipulated in quite wild and yeah. um, actually obsessing when you think about some of it ways. Um, yeah. yeah, And that was, it was really interesting because the conversations that we had with people at the festival who visited our stall um, mm. and looked at the skulls and drew their own pictures um, oh. was really, yeah, it really, it was a quite a big change for me in saying okay yeah. this is yeah this is a really powerful way of both of getting the ideas across but also um bringing back ways of thinking about the impact of people on the environment as well so yeah um you know you you learn as much as you teach um <laughs> engaging in, in a project like that yeah um, so that was really interesting and we carried on i mean jackie still carries on um an organization called gorilla archaeology that does festival okay. outreach um oh great and it's it's gone to glastonbury and um or else green man quite a few years um mm -hmm. and several other festivals that i now forget um yeah <laughs> so when i came to okay. bath spa i was interested to kind of continue that sort of work um, okay and actually i was talking to a colleague um in the acting department called rulo um, okay. who is a um, part um, part dramaturge, part slightly slapstick actor. Um, mm. And um, we were looking specifically at climate change um, okay. and ways to maybe create something um, that would be using theatre as a way to explore climate change really, which is not, okay. it's not a new idea. There are plenty of other people doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And some people have been doing it for quite a few years as well. Um, but we thought it might be a really interesting way to see how it would impact the learning of our students. Um, so we did something in collaboration with geography students and acting students. Um, okay. Where the geography students kind of taught the acting students about climate change. And there was a dialogue oh. there. Um, and again, the same, the same point that I made that you, you learn as much as you teach in a situation yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The one thing we were really surprised about is that um, the actors, so working on environmental art, climate art is not, it's not just about the public, it's about the people who are involved in the project as well and changing mm. their perceptions. Right. Um, and the thing that we were really surprised to learn is that the actors had quite a fair understanding of the environmental implications of climate change, but they okay. hadn't really appreciated the human dimension of that um, and the uh, way that it impacts people's lives. Um, yeah. So that was, that was really interesting. Um, and yeah, it kind of gave me um, gave me a bit of courage to think. Okay, this is this is an interesting avenue that that needs yeah. to be explored. Because again, coming back to the barrier to risk perception um, is really understanding where where we as individuals, with our own kind of selfish interests, fit into <laughs> the picture of what's happening to the environment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, very powerful. And anyway, the. The end of this story is that we <laughs> created a play um, called okay. Last Hurrah and the Long Haul, um, which is um, quite chaotic and comic, but um, okay. also quite poignant. And it tells the story of a very small community 
um, who are tied quite closely to the environment for their way of life. Mm. But um, the things that they rely on become interrupted by climate change. Um, mm. And it shows how they how they react to that and how the, the community unravels and then comes back together um, mm. as a result of this. Okay. And when was that? Was that recent? Or? So it, the first performances were at the University Theatre in Bath Spa um, in 2018. Um, okay. It was then revised a bit over the next year and shown in 2019. Um, and then at the Cornerstone Theatre in Didcot in February of last year, um, with really big plans to tour oh. last summer. Oh, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Right. And we, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, you know how the story ends. Yeah. But, um, we met, we met last night. Um, okay. Via Zoom. Um, yeah. <laughs> and are picking up our plans. So there will be okay. a, a development period in, a, in April where we're going to form a little bubble for, um, Aha. for some time. And um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, touch woods um, later in the year it will be touring oh okay uh, it, around the uk around the uk yeah oh brilliant yes so we were able we received some funding from the university which enabled us to okay employ a producer um darren walter uh and okay. he has been um he's just submitted an arts council england bid um for the development stage okay um, and that so hopefully our bubble will actually be paid employment for the graduate oh. actors now graduate actors that are Brilliant. involved in this um so is it the same course. is it the same students that were involved initially that are still involved it is yes it's a oh, very wow. um it's a very small company of um nine actors um okay but the the play is works around their personalities so it's very much okay. uh, a reflection because it's it's devised theatre um okay rather than working to an existing script we mm. have um it's kind of developed quite semi-organically based around the personality of the actors and we were talking okay. about um understudying last night and yeah that for, for some of the stronger personalities in the company it might actually be quite a challenge there'll be some very very different energy on the stage um, <laughs> Yeah, you don't have those actors involved. Um, yeah. but of course they are—they are recent graduates. They are at the start of their career, um, yeah. and at a terrible time to be starting their career. Um, yeah. So we, you know, we have to accept that they—they they may not be able to to make the commitment. To the yeah, field, depending on what else is going on. Um, so yeah, yeah, critically important that we can offer them paid work. Yeah, uh, to keep them on board, really. Yeah, that's great that you got the funding. That's wonderful. Um, so I wanted to ask it. You said it was it was equally about the audience, uh, about the acting members of the the crew, and then it as it was the audience. So how did it change the cast and crew do, do, doing this process? That's a really interesting question because um, part of what I hoped when I went so we, we started this project in late 2017 okay. um, and part of what I hoped was that we would see we would be able to evidence through interviews and um, diaries that the mm. actors had blossomed into very much more <laughs> eco-conscious people um, <laughs> okay. and they have they have done that uh -huh. the, the problem is what that is attributable to because right. over that time period since 2017 the general awareness among the population of the climate crisis has changed so much um mm. through you know various um pieces of activism like the school mm. strikes and extinction rebellion yeah. um through news coverage of the ipcc special report on 1.5 degrees warming mm. um and in our interviews, we, we did the interviews in 2019, in the summer of 2019, after um, a rehearsal. And the actors were very open about that fact that yes, they they feel very differently to how they did in 2017 when we started. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, 
but they're not really sure why it is because also mm. all their friends are talking about climate change now and um, yeah. you know it's in the news and it's it's being used to market products and services um, <laughs> so it's yeah. a yeah it's a very different um very different place we're in yeah um, I, I I remember when I also did a few years ago I did some research on environmental theatre and specifically um and it is that's one of the hardest things with social science um and social geography is to measure people's <laughs> yeah. opinions and react and how they feel about climate change and it's so hard to know if it's was it that one theatre piece or was it this you know piece of activism or was it just that it was in the news more um so it is really hard yeah. it's hard to measure that um okay. yeah uh also i really love that you you're from geography and um your colleague is from the drama department i feel like that, that maybe it's being done more now um but certainly when i was doing my research which was maybe four years ago now five years ago it wasn't really a a thing to go cross <laughs> across into the arts department i was in the geography department and to like go across to the arts okay. was quite um that was quite a leap and i was quite yes, surprised yeah, definitely that it was <laughs> so um was that your you did that you went to drama and said let's collaborate or how did that come about yes so um i did know um rue the acting lecturer i knew him from before he joined the university um, okay we were actually friends when we were young um oh. so that made it quite easy um, <laughs> okay yeah brilliant um but yes it was it was very much we had at the time there was a bit of a an institutional um taste for collaboration i think um, okay. The Bartsby University is quite a small university, um, okay. and it's a, especially strong in creative arts. Um, right. mm -hmm. And we had we had gone through universities enjoy periods of structural reorganisation. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they, I think there are people who are employed on a full time basis to find ways to disrupt <laughs> the way that the university is organised. Yeah. Um, and. For a while we were organized into what was called the College of Liberal Arts which included ah. um, the the science departments and the business department and oh, wow. um, the uh, drama acting and music departments um, wow. and the humanities as well so a really broad church yeah. um, and we sort of Rue and I interpreted that as meaning that we this was exactly the sort of thing we should be doing um, mm -hmm. In practice, it is quite difficult to get across disciplinary silos, um, again, from an organisational point of view, um, yeah. just because it's not it's not the kind of research that people are generally used to. Mm. Um, yeah. Again, I'm not, not saying that we were doing anything radically new, but um, certainly there's not... Yeah. It, it's not quite as, as easy as hell, but... Um, the, my colleagues in the geography department um, were, and also colleagues in the research centre for environmental humanities, um, especially Professor Kate Rigby, um, were tremendously supportive um, mm. of this. And actually, the Ruse colleagues were very supportive as well, um, okay. and we were able to get um, good dramaturgical feedback um, from them along the way as well. So that was really useful, just having some outside eyes to see things. Yeah. Um, and right. similarly, we invited the geography students and staff to see a production of the play um and geography mm -hmm. colleagues gave me some interesting feedback as well um so oh, it was right. quite, it, yeah it was very useful <laughs> um, yeah that's great Ed, are you apart from working on it to to hopefully put it on in the summer are you do, are you working on anything else or thinking of any other kind of arts and environment collaborations that you'd like to do yes so i have been talking that it's fairly early stages um but i have been talking to um somebody else at Bartholomew university professor marilyn neudeke who's a professor of fine art um okay about a um 
an international collaboration with some of her colleagues in Argentina, um, oh. looking at um, a kind of public participation in how water availability is changing around the world. So okay. um, obviously one of the impacts, ongoing impacts of climate change um, is a problem of essentially either too much water in some places that aren't ready to receive it um, yeah. or too little. Yes. Um, and Marilla was very drawn to the idea of um, literally windows looking out on a changing landscape. Um, and the plan is to record, to get audio recordings, um, which I think would be interpreted into visual arts as well, um, from oh, people okay. uh, around the world, um, into how how their um, how their water availability situation has changed, or the impacts of flooding, the impacts of drought, okay. things like that. Um, but yes, that's okay. that's in in early development stages. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a few collaborators um, involved in that. So hopefully yeah. that will be something we'll be able to work on um, later this year. Yeah. And again, was that did she come to you or did you go to her? Are you still in the liberal arts? Is that so still liberal, how well, it works? Has no. it changed? <laughs> <laughs> Things change. Um, no, we're not. So we are. I'm now in the school of sciences um and okay marila and marila is in the bath school of art I okay yeah what rue is in but something else <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> um so that one i came to her oh there was a funding call which we ended up not applying for because it was it's a very close deadline um mm. but there was a funding call and the dean of the school of art um wrote to the head of the school of sciences saying we we would ideally like to have some scientific collaborators on this oh um, wow okay so it uh, came it, from the arts department so it came from the arts mm. yeah okay. but it didn't come to pass but marila and i had some long conversations and decided that it was something worth doing anyway um so hopefully hopefully we'll be able to work on that oh brilliant that's great. And um, just going back to the theatre piece that you did, um, did you measure any audience um, kind of feelings or thoughts or uh, opinions like before and after the show? Did you do any measuring there or you just put it on as a performance? We haven't done any very scientific measuring um, at the moment. Okay. And um, so part of the planning for the tour is also planning for audience evaluation. Um, okay. But um, we did we did uh, elicit some some quick feedback, um, ask it mostly asking people because the play doesn't explicitly mention climate change. Um, okay. So mm -hmm. people are somewhat left to draw the connection, although it's not a difficult connection to draw. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, so we did we did ask people um, at Bath Spa when they came out of the performance you know what did you just see what was this play about um, okay people got it um a few people said that they thought that it was um a very important piece of theater that it needed to be seen um but yeah we've not done we've not done any detailed audience evaluation work yet mm. um we've not really had so the the performances at bath bar were um obviously on home territory so quite quite mm. safe Right. Um, mm -hmm. The performance at Didcot was linked to an Oxford University conference um, mm -hmm. on um, creative arts and humanities um, and how they can interact. Okay. Um, so the audience there, although there was a public audience there, there was also rather a lot of academics there. Um, so again, a slightly <laughs> slightly skewed audience, <laughs> um, perhaps. Yeah. Do you have do you have an intention for the piece like an intended audience or an intended reaction or Im impact? Um, I would like. I mean, I would like as many people as possible to see it. Um, okay. But I would like. Um, really, I think I'm quite interested in working with younger audiences. 
Um, and okay. part of what another thing that we're developing is um, pairing it with um, engagement activities that we can take into classrooms um, ah, at a couple okay. of age points. And uh, one of our actors um, works at the Groundlings Theatre in Portsmouth, um, and she's very keen in particular to develop that. She does um, classroom engagement there. Mm. Um, one of the geographers who was involved is now a primary teacher, um, <laughs> so she's very keen to stay involved in shaping that as well. Yeah. That's great. Have you heard of uh, the Bone Ensemble from University of Manchester? No. Okay, it, a fellow Climate Cultures member, uh, Adam, I forget his, Adam Ledger. Uh, he's a professor at the University of Manchester and he created the Bone Ensemble and they create um, pieces specifically for young audiences. Um, okay. So they did one about uh, 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 someone who lives in the north northern hemisphere uh sort of an indigenous uh, girl i believe and she went she goes on a journey i'm not i'm not too sure i've not seen the piece and they're working on another one now but um he might be really interesting for you to connect with uh, because yeah. he's he's already kind of in that space of um younger audiences and i think they try yeah. and make them um non-language specific so it also covers different oh, okay. um, kind of if, you know, kids from different cultures, if they haven't got English as their first language, it still speaks to them. Um, so, yeah, maybe have a look um, and see what they're doing. But they did take they did take that one on tour. Um, but obviously now I'm not sure also what they're doing. Um, yeah. I'm, ho I'm hoping to speak to Adam as a podcast as well. Um, Great. <laughs> He said he was in rehearsal so maybe there's remote rehearsals okay. going on um wow. so uh, I'm, i'll be excited to talk to him about what he's been up to <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. but there, there may be some synergy there yes um, no it sounds like there's definitely yeah. Title up, and that yeah. Would be an interesting thing to explore yeah yeah that's brilliant um so do you have so just speaking of other eco art um events and works and projects do you have any that that you've particularly enjoyed or particularly inspired you or um, impacted you? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I've been quite, I've been quite a fan of um, some of the musical reactions to the climate crisis. Um, oh, okay. Um, so that's, yeah. Um, so in particular, th there are ways that it's, it's weaved into um, the most recent album by Laura Veers, for example. Um, okay. And she, so she's a, an American, um, quite folky singer-songwriter. Um, okay. And her, her most recent album, whose name I've completely forgotten. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Is, um, but, but it came out this year. Um, and it's, it's largely okay. about, she, she also divorced over the past couple of years. Um, so it's largely about that. Um, but at the same time in the lyrics, there's this backdrop of um, a greater unraveling in, in the environment around her. Um, okay. So she has a song called Another Place in Time where she sings about, um, you know, there's another place in time where things are working out better and California is not burning. And oh, um, okay. it's, um, yeah, I thought that was really striking that kind of um, how she just brings that, that broader canvas in really. And, mm. yeah. So sorry. So this is like contemporary music you're talking about, like yes, yeah. The, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. I thought when you said musical, I just thought musical theatre. So <laughs> you mean oh, okay, musical okay. as yeah. in music, people, musicians, basically, and singers. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've not come across okay. any musical theatre. I'm sure it exists, <laughs> but I've not come across any climate it, change. Music it theater. does. It does exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's not called, like widely <laughs> but there is one called you're in town um, okay which is quite i would say that's more on more known um you're in town yeah they've based and it's basically they've run out of water there's a town they've run out of water oh, okay and so of course toilets you're in town like you may <laughs> you can imagine <laughs> what yeah. happens um and it's kind of it's a bit of a it's quite a uh, what's the word it's quite light-hearted it's a bit kind of farcical um 
but basically yeah there's sort of you know people you have to pay to use the toilet and and, and all of that, those sort of things and then the people rise up and against the toilet lords and all of that oh. so it's quite it's fun but it's also it has this kind of serious edge to it um and they use uh i'm not sure how <laughs> how familiar you are with the dramaturgical um, phrases, but they use uh, Brechtian techniques. So they like talk to, come out of character, talk to the audience and things. Right, okay. Um, so yeah, you're in town, there you go. Okay, <laughs> okay. Thank you. So yes, it does exist, but you're talking about, yeah. And I know um, bands, there are lots of bands like the 1975 who are using, mm -hmm. um, they're using, was they using Greta Thunberg's speeches and things in there? That's right, yeah. Their music. Yeah. And and I think, I believe Fatboy Slim also sampled her in one of his. <laughs> <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, I think it's, it's mm -hmm. brilliant actually, because it makes it, from what you were saying earlier, um, to me, it was, it's about everyday climate change so it's like yeah. rather than climate change being this big thing it's about how it what how it forms or how it appears in our everyday lives um and i i, I agree yeah. with you that contemporary music like if you're just listening to your fam favorite singer and they're singing about it it makes it more everyday uh, yeah i think so yeah. yeah that is great but i will look up that singer as well i've never not heard of her um okay. but yeah um so what what do you think is needed in the space at the moment so the space where arts and environmentalism combine collide meet what do you think is needed um oh, that's a good question um so there's the obvious very immediate needs of um uh a sustainable recovery from what we're going through at the moment um okay particularly in, you know, on the arts side um, and having seriously thinking about, um, about the sustainable aspect of that as well. So letting the medium be the message of um, the work that environmental artists are doing. So not simply creating activist works, um, but bringing that activism into your practice as well, doing it in as sustainable, as meaningfully sustainable a way as possible. Okay. Um, and there's there's a big challenge there because, um, you know, if you think about within theatre, um, the actual physical architecture of theatres mm. um, and the kinds of buildings that theatres very often are, um, there are definite challenges to managing them in a, in a low emissions mm. way. Um, and so um, definitely I would want to mention the work of um, Julie's Bicycle mm. uh, in right. this regard, which has been <laughs> fantastic. Um, yep. And the mm. amount of free resources they've made available, um, mm -hmm. it's really, really great to see. Um, but yeah, definitely. The other, the other thing that came out of um, our interviews with the actors on The Last Hurrah um, is very much that they they sensed that it would be a bit hypocritical to be um, to be going out performing shows about the impacts of climate change while contributing to the worsening of those impacts. Mm. Um, right. So another thing we were talking about in our meeting last night is um, what are what are approaches to drawing down emissions are going to be um, within our within our own practice. Um, okay and uh, whether it's appropriate to offset as well. And we think that probably, you know, to get towards zero emissions, there's going to have to be an aspect of offsetting there, um, okay. which we need to think very carefully about as well so that it's, it's something that's meaningful. Because um, you can probably hide quite a lot of um, mm. not that helpful things under the, under the banner of offsetting. There's definitely a lot yeah. to think about there. Um, mm yeah yeah right. so I, th I think that's that's a really important thing and hopefully it will mean that there is that it, it will engender a lot of um pride and ownership in um environmental art as well um mm. and yeah. i think that's really important i think um it's really important that people are able to have a positive vision of the future um yeah and um yeah being able to see and 
you know, things like the Climate Cultures Network, I think, help in that respect as well, because they're, they're connecting people who are working towards um, more or less common ends. Um, mm. Being able to see that you're part of something positive, I think, is is going to be critically important for a lot of people um, as we recover from the pandemic um, and mm. as we address the ongoing ecological crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. 